Hello, and welcome to an episode of the Climate Data Toolbox for MATLAB. I'm your host, Dr. Chad Green of NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory. Today, we're going to be talking a little bit about how to analyze trends in climate data using the Climate Data Toolbox for MATLAB. And I'm going to be posting the, the code in the description below so you can follow along there if you miss anything. Also, if you see the name of any CDT function you're uh, not familiar with, uh, simply go to the command line and type CDT and then the name of the function that you want to learn more about. So for example, if you want to learn about the deseason function, just type CDT deseason. And that brings up a documentation menu very similar to if you press doc for a standard MATLAB function. Okay, the data we're going to be using today is in an example data set called Pacific SST. So start out by loading that data set. So now we've loaded the data, and uh, let's explore what's inside it using the whos function. So who tells you what variables you have, and add an s to also give you the sizes of these variables. So we find out that when we loaded the Pacific SST data set, we loaded a variable called lat, another one called lawn, one called SST for sea surface temperature, and then T for time. So SST is this uh, three-dimensional matrix where the first dimension corresponds, uh, it has 60 uh, entries in it, so that corresponds to latitude. The second variable is longitude, and the third is time. Time here is monthly data set. It's a, about a 67-year data set of monthly uh, values, so there are 802 months since uh, around 1950 when this data set began. So knowing now what the size of the SST data is, we can start out uh, just by orienting ourselves, just plotting the mean sea surface temperature. To do that, uh, calculate the mean as SST mean equals the mean of SST and along the third dimension. Now we can plot that. You can plot it either using p color or image sc for standard functions, but uh, CDT has an extra function that's very similar to image sc, but we have an n on the end of it, which just means it sets the NAND data to transparent. So here we're using the image sc n function, uh, where lon is corresponding to the x data, latitude is the y data, and the mean field is the gridded data. So here in the figure we have the mean sea surface temperature over the past 67 years or so, and uh, it shows that unsurprisingly the warmer colors are near the center, uh, right around the, the equator. So you can label longitude and latitude. And then get a color bar for the temperature data. Now we can use this standard MATLAB color map, but I really like to use uh, more intuitive colors wherever there's a variable that has some colors that might be naturally associated with it. In CDT, there is a function called CMotion, which has uh, several different color maps that are meant actually for climate data. To take a look at what options are available in CMotion, just type CMotion. And that brings up a little image showing the different color maps that are available. For temperature data, I really like to use thermal, and so that's what we'll use here. And now we've set the color map to a thermal temperature data, and you see these cold colors uh, at the far north and at the far south, and then warmer colors in the middle. To add a little bit to this map, you might want to say hold on to uh, to hold the state of the of the map and be able to plot more on top of it. And then maybe borders. This plots, plots some geopolitical boundaries, and you see that the border data is uh, a bit higher spatial resolution than this example uh, sea surface temperature data set. Uh, so, so they don't exactly align, but that's just due to the coarse resolution of the sea surface temperature data set that we're using here. Now, if you want to look at the trends at a single location. So uh, maybe if you want to look around here where the latitude is maybe 23 degrees north 
and longitude is 115 or so uh, to the west, you can get the index of the nearest point that you're interested in. So for example, if you want to know the row number of the latitude where uh, corresponding to 23 degrees, you say uh, near one, So this will tell you the nearest row to the latitude value corresponding to 23 degrees north. So that says uh, latitude entry number 19 is close to 23. Let's see. Oops. And here we see, OK, latitude number 19 is 23.5 degrees. That's great. We'll do the same thing for the column. Uh, so column equals near one. And we said we want to look around 115 west. OK. And sure enough, uh, longitude number 33 corresponds to about 115.5 degrees west. To plot that point, just to get a little bit of spatial context, say plot long. 33, lat, 19, and make it a black circle. And here on a map, we have a little black circle uh, centered right on this uh, data cell that we're going to be investigating briefly. So if we want to look at the, ten, the temperature trends in this single data cell, then what we have to do is use our SST variable. So remember, this is the 60 by 55 by 802 uh, data cube. And in this SST variable, we want to just look at the time series of this one grid cell. So that would be SST1 for a one-dimensional array equals SST of the row that we're interested in, the column that we're interested in, and then all of the data through time. And what we see here is that the size of SST1, since we have just one row, one column, and then all of the time data, we see that the dimensions are 1 by 1 by 802. Now MATLAB doesn't really like to put things along the third dimension if that's the only place where uh, the data varies. So the thing that we have to do in this case is say SST1 equals squeeze of SST1. Oops. And so we're here we're just squeezing that third dimension into the first available singleton dimension. And now we see, okay, size of SST1 is now 802 by 1. What this means is we can plot it as a simple time series. So we're going to clear our figure and plot t sst1. So in this figure, we have uh, the, horizontal, the horizontal dimension is time, and the vertical dimension is temperature. Now, you might not recognize that uh, format of time. It's 7 times 10 to the 5. That's simply the number of days since the first day of year 0. Uh, which is the MATLAB's date num format. And if you want to get that into a bit more human readable format, you can say date tick. And here we see that the data goes from about 1950 to 2017. Now, the first thing we, want, we might notice in this data set is there may or may not be a trend in the temperature, but overwhelmingly the variability is dominated by these uh, spikes and dips that correspond to seasonal cycles. It's a very consistent seasonal pattern within this data. So if you uh, want to look at data without a seasonal pattern, then you can deseason it. So SST deseasoned would be obtained just with the deseason function. Now we can plot this on top of the raw data. First, say hold on. Just make sure. 
and and now this orange line uh, corresponds to the deseasoned temperature data and it has quite a bit of variability at short time scales but none of the standard seasonal cycle remains So if we want to look at trends in this data, uh, an easy way to do that is to, if you just want to plot it, you say polyplot, which is a polynomial plot. And now we have this horizontal line that is a linear trend, a least squares fit to all of the data. Uh, now if you want to do this to the deseasoned data as well, you can just uh, do the polyplot of the deseason data. Oops. Oh, yes. And what we see is that the trends are very similar, whether you're looking at the trends in the deseason data or trends in the raw data. They're so similar that we'll just consider them the same at this point. Now, uh, again, what we really want to understand is how have the temperature trends in this grid cell changed over time. In this plot, you can see that the, the trend goes a little bit up, but what is the quantitative value of that? Well, you can use the uh, polyfit function in standard MATLAB, uh, or you can use the trend function. So trend is in CDT. So if you want to look at the trend in sea surface temperatures and its monthly data, so there's 12 measurements per year. That's the sampling frequency. Oops. The trend in SST1, our, our linear array, is about 0 0.018 degrees per year. So the temperature is increasing about uh, a percent or two percent of a degree, or a tenth, <laughs> one one hundredth, or uh, two hundredths of a degree per year. And if you look at that, if you multiply that over the the full length of our record which is about 67 years, you say, okay, well, the trend has increased, the, the temperature uh, globally has increased, or, or in this grid cell, has increased by about 1.25 degrees. And sure enough, when we look back at 1950, the temperature was just under 21 degrees, and today it's a little bit over 22 degrees. So 1.25 degrees is the trend. So this is all just looking at a single grid cell, and we, we find that the trend is about uh, 0 0.01 degrees per year, or 0 0.1 degrees per decade. But if we want to look at the entire map of data, if we want to look at a bit of spatial context, you can also use the trend function. To do that, uh, just type SST trend equals the trend of SST. Now, we'll plot this as a map. First, clear our figure and say image SC. OK, now we have the trends plotted in the right-hand side. Add a color bar and label it. I'll say degrees, which is circ. Uh, in LaTeX, you do a backslash and circ for a circle. And so we have degrees C Celsius per decade, per year. All right, so here we're seeing exactly what we saw but uh, for the single grid cell, but for every grid cell. This is the trend of temperature for every grid cell over the course of our record. Now, this is a divergent data set. It's, uh, some values have gone up, others have gone down, and you can see that the zero here uh, shows that there are some values below zero and then some above zero. So really, we should be using a divergent color map. For that, I use the balance color map in CDT, and then I want it to pivot around the value of zero. So I say pivot. And here we see anywhere it's red, the trend, the, the sea surface temperature has gone up. 
since 1950, and anywhere it's blue, the temperature has gone down since 1950. Now you might be curious, well, how does this, uh, does this really mean anything? Are, they, are these trends significant? Well, it turns out that when you calculate the trend uh, using CDT, you can, there are a number of different ways you can uh, measure the significance of these trends. So earlier when we calculated this trend, we could do the second output to get the p-values of the trends as well. And this is this p-value creates a grid the same size as the trend grid, which just tells you whether the trend is significant. Another way to do it is with the man-kindle function. Now, the man-kindle function, uh, using our uh, our data from just the single location, as an example, the man-kindle function tells you whether a trend is significant. So, man-kindle. Uh, just for the sea, sea surface temperature data in the one location, you say, is it significant? And if it, turns, if it returns one, then it says, yes, this is a statistically significant trend. Compare that with if you just had a random numbers, random numbers, the same size as your SST. And Kindle says, no, random numbers are not a st statistically significant trend. OK, but doing this trend map as a map instead of a single location, we can use the mankindle function the same way. You say mankindle equals. And this will produce a map of all the values that are significant versus all the ones that are not. Mankindle is a, it takes a second to run. So while it's crunching the numbers, all right, now it's run. Um, and then we can plot this as a stipple. So hold on, and then stipple. Stipple just means little dots, and K. So now we see on the right-hand side, it's we have black dots wherever the, the trend is statistically significant. So most of this warming that we see is statistically significant. There are a couple of places where cooling is statistically significant as well. And then some areas where it's just too noise to, noisy to tell, really tell whether we've measured a trend that's meaningful or just noise. So anyway, this has uh, been a quick overview of some of the trend analysis functions that we have in the Climate Data Toolbox from MATLAB. And if you'd like to see me go through examples of any other types of analysis, just drop me a line and I might be able to make a video for that as well. Thank you.